Lucky Boys podcast. Homeless people in, and front, homeless of people in front of them, right? And drug addicts. And I mean, that's what I saw growing up, right? Right. Uh, on my way to school and on my way home from school, every single day without fail, homeless people um, in front of the building, across the street from my building, drug addicts, people just laying on the floor, um, drunk in the daytime, and uh, getting into arguments, fights, uh, seeing a bunch of ambulance vehicles, picking them up, um, watching police take reports from something that happened. And as a child, I thought that was normal. I thought that was normal. Um, walking my mom, having them harass her while I, while I was with her, my mom getting into arguments with them. These uh, like random, like- uh, Random homeless people saying people. crazy stuff yeah. to my mom. You know, basically cat calling her. Yeah, yeah. And I was just, like, how you gonna cat call uh, someone when they're with their kid? Mm. You know what I mean? I think I was like five or six years old, but I yeah. remember that. I remember that my mom was like really upset. Um, yelled back at him and and you know this homeless guy was like yeah seeing all these curse words and uh, I'm seeing gestures mm-hmm. you know and um, my mom just kept moving and I just wanted to get me home and you get know, you safe that yeah. we lived like right there so like it's unavoidable yeah it's unavoidable every time I I left my home it, it was right there right in front of my home it was unavoidable right. So uh, I mean, my heart goes out to, to everyone and in, in, you know living in that community. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I I was born in that environment. I was born and raised in that environment, and I can't tell you that it was easy. I never felt safe. My parents didn't feel good about letting me out. Uh, they were always worried when it was dark and I wasn't home, and because of that, they were so strict on my freedom. I was very limited in where I can go and what time I, I needed to be back home and how I was able to check in with them. Um, it, it was tough. It was tough. And, and, and for me, I couldn't understand that because, hey, I'm just a teenage boy. I want to be out with my friends, mom. You don't get it. Like, why are you being so overprotective? Yeah, you didn't get the sense of danger. I, at that yeah, because, you know, when you're a kid, you think you're invincible. But yeah. I get it now. Yeah. Right. And I got it as soon as I, I matured. Right? Yeah, I feel I feel the exact same way when my grand, grandfather uh, he was walking me home, home, and and this this I, I assume he's a homeless guy, but he he took out a pair of scissors and tried to rob him, and I was like, I didn't feel anything because I didn't know it was dangerous or not, but I knew my grandfather was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna give you some money, okay, go go away, because he was trying to protect me, making sure that you know I wasn't in front of him. So, but thinking back on it, I'm like, wow, I grew up in that neighborhood and. Things could have gone south, and you know we grew up right in between that, right? Yeah, you was a, you was on the other end of it, and mm. and and I was at the beginning end of it, right? Mm. And you know the violence that comes with that, you know the dangers that come with that, mm-hmm. right? Where they would break into the buildings, where if they needed money, who they would look to, right? I mean, if they're drug addicts. Or if they're homeless and they're they're desperate within themselves, and they see an opportunity, I mean, it's happening right now. Yeah, it's yeah. happening right now, right? And I can't tell you how many of my aunts, uncles, neighbors, people that I know—not even Asian, Hispanic, Black, Italian—were robbed because we were in, we lived in close proximity mm. to to that. So if it's if it's one of those homeless shelters where it's ho- let me tell you something, homeless people. You know how they were taking the encampments down all over New York City? Mayor Adams was taking all these encampments down. And I get it. Like, no one wants to walk New York City and having, you know, take see a homeless encampment makeshift and they have to walk across and walk in the street or feel dang, like, you know, their life is unsafe. Unsafe, yeah. Yeah. So while taking them down, they interviewed a lot of these homeless people. Like, why don't you just go to a homeless shelter? And you know what their answer was? It's not safe. It's not safe. Mm-hmm. The type right. of people that go in there, I don't even feel safe going in there, and I'm a homeless person. Right. So what does that say of of building it in the communities where it's near schools, near no, parks, right. where so, children so play? So shouldn't the solution be fixing that problem instead mm. of spreading it around? Oh, let me build more. Let me build more shelters. Let me do one in Chinatown. There's a bigger problem. Let me do four more in Chinatown. It sounds like that it's just a, exacerbates the problem. But for them, when they talk to the other, you know, the well, I'm doing something. I'm putting more shelters, right? And and how many? What's the population? Are we asked them? 
right? And now they're using, um, you know, Mr. Kwok and say, oh, remember that a couple of years ago, Mr. Kwok who was killed? He said, oh, no, no, they're Chinese people who are also homeless. I said, wow, you're going to take this one guy mm. who were killed, right, by another homeless person. You're not talking about the perpetrator who killed them, but you're talking about him being Asian. And if you build all this shelter, you like, how many Mr. Kwok are there? Look around, right? It's okay for you to say, you know, we're too many overrepresentation in, in specialized high schools, but then, you know, in the shelters, it, it's just, it's just wrong. And I just think that fundamentally, we need accountability. We need elected officials and people to really solve the real problem. Lucky Boys Podcast.